Oh, okay. You got it? Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I know I'm a little bit late, but I seem to have trouble figuring out where the button is to just go live. Man, YouTube made this a pain in the ass. Anyway, so let me go ahead and uh, put my chat up here so I can see who's out there. But, um, yeah, I don't like being late, contrary to popular belief. Um, anyway, so it's weird. It's also, man, kind of a funky thing on here. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little different for me. Um, YouTube is, uh, I'm trying to figure it out, but, uh, you know, like how hard is it to just put a go live button on the stream knowing that man, you scheduled it. It's pretty easy. I don't know. But, um, but unfortunately, man, fucking, it's not quite that easy. Um, you know, but yeah, whatever. Well, I'm not going to sit here and bitch. That's not man. That's not why I got on here. Um, anyway, um, uh, hi, how are you guys doing? Hopefully, man, uh, hopefully you guys can see me because, man, I'm not seeming to be able to get the, there we go. There's a the live chat. There we go. I can see you now. Um, anyway, so, yeah, you know, I've been uh, sick the last couple of days, um, at least feeling sick the last couple of days. Um, but, and that kind of caused a little problem with pretrial because um, they were trying to get me over to do a UA and man, then, you know, we were having problems with it, you know. And uh, for as much as he wanted to ban me, I'm sure, man, you know, he decided not to because, you know, it wasn't my fault. So anyway, um, you know, that you know, pretrial is always kind of a pain in the ass, um, you know, but, but what are you going to do? Um, so, hey, guys. Uh, hi, Chrissy. Hi, hi Gabri G Gabrielle. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, anyway, so, for, you know, for this week, uh, you know, I was kind of going to pick up where we left off last week. Um, you know, we had because a lot of people seem to disagree with me about the judge. So I was kind of wanting to see what you guys think, um, you know, because I can be wrong. You know, Lord knows I can be. Um, you know, I have a lot of hope for this judge. Maybe it's just my own hopes. But um, a lot of people are seeing him as not going to be cool. Um, you know, kind of maybe not as bad as the last judge, but, uh, you know, maybe not dirty, you know, but that he's not going to be very cool. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think, you know, because I've been saying that, you know, personally, I think that the judge is going to be is probably the best one I can get, at least down there. Um, I don't know. You know, it's like the other judges I look at, you know, the ones I know of down there. Yeah, they're they're probably not going to be too cool. So I don't know. It's um, it's kind of weird because the vibe I get from him is is that he's going to be he's going to play by the book. He's kind of a new judge um, and that he's going to try and do it by the rules. Um, other people disagree with me and they say that, you know, this guy is going to, you know, he's going to ban me. And it's, it's basically just a setup. And, you know, that that uh, this guy, uh, you know, he's actually going to have a hard on for me, man, after if he decides to stay the judge. Um, I guess we'll see. You know, I don't know. You know, it's like uh, I was kind of interested to see what everybody else had to say, though, because, you know, I started you know maybe second guessing myself there. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm just being too hopeful about, man, what this guy, you know, with this guy actually being legit. Um, you know, it's, it's definitely men, you know, it's possible. Um, let's see. He seems strict to the point. We haven't seen much about him yet. Yeah. See, I agree. Um, you know, I haven't seen enough of him yet. He hasn't made any rulings. So it's like, it's kind of hard to, you know, kind of get a read on that. Um, let's see. And then he seems strict. Let's see. We got, I looked him up. He was military. Yep. Prosecutor. I looked all that up to public defender. And study business in college. Yeah, I looked all that up too. I'm um, also, I also, I don't know if I posted it up, man. Posted it up, but I did. Um, he's campaigning right now, so I, you know, I, I saw him give his campaign speech. Um, I've seen a few things with him. And it seems like a nice guy, at least in you know when he's out in public. Um, you know, and like I said, I kind of like the fact that he calls himself Jimmy instead of James. You know, he's kind of a little informal there. Um, so I kind of I like that, you know, but. Uh, yeah, let's see. If you, I think if you have all your ducks in a row, you should not have a problem with him. That's my opinion. Well, good. See, that's what I'm hoping, right? I'm look. All I'm hoping is that this guy is going to do it. You know, he's going to do it by the law. You know, if he goes by the law, then man, we have no problems because, you know, really, I mean, the law at this point is well on my side. Um, 
you know, I've been doing a lot of case law research. I've been doing, you know, going and making the motion to dismiss. Um, and I think I told you guys this last week, I haven't filed my response yet. Um, but, you know, to the prosecutor's motion in limine. Um, the reason I haven't done it yet is because I want to get a little bit closer to the actual hearing. Um, because, no, I don't want to, you know, kind of show my hand too much, man, you know, too much ahead of time, you know, give them time to go and look up case law and come back with whatever, you know. Um, so I haven't filed that yet. I'm going to, but and it's already already done for the most part. Um, it's just that, you know, it's like, again, I think it's a little bit early for me to go ahead and file that response. Um, but but I think I did say last week, and I do intend on doing this, is yes, I am going to ask the judge to go ahead and dismiss the case based on the current misconduct. Um, because, you know, while I can't file the motion to dismiss until I get the transcripts, uh, you know, because I'm going to need those to cite for the for the motion, um, you, ha you know, you have to have them, basically. Um, but, but since I can't file that until I get the transcripts, and these guys continually are continuing to lie, you know, they actually lied to the judge, you know, in their motion. I'm like, okay, well, if they're, they lied, you know, they ended the trial lying to the jury, right? And, you know, you know, even though the judge let them go back, you know, deliberate with the lie, that, that was, you know, again, that's his misconduct. But, you know, that's enough to get them disbarred. And the fact that, man, they're trying to still prosecute me after that and just ignore the fact that they did that, it's like, okay, that's bad enough. But then to come back to the judge and, you know, immediately lie in your motion, it's like, okay, you guys have no ability to be honest is what it is. And if you have no ability to be honest, man, I mean, your prosecution, you can't prosecute. How can you prosecute, man, if you can't be honest? You know, it's like, I mean, you know, just that that alone, man, should, you know, throw, toss the case out. Um, so we'll see. Um, did you file your motion to dismiss it? No, I have not. Because like I said, I need the transcripts, man, to go ahead and do that. But I'll tell you what, I file that. I mean, that's the thing. And that's one, kind of what I put in the response a little bit is, you know, yeah, I mean, if he doesn't want to dismiss it, man, based on this current misconduct with the motion that they just filed, then I can go ahead and file the motion to dismiss. But that thing is going to be, I mean, yeah, it is a floodgate. I mean, they did so many different things wrong over the last seven, almost seven years that uh, it's it's absolutely ridiculous. And, I mean, you talk about, look, they embarrassed the 16th Judicial enough when they took this to trial the first time. Um, to go ahead and, and put all their misconduct out there, put all the illegal things they did out there, because I, I probably cited at least 40 or 50 different laws they broke. Um, but... The thing is, is um, to do that, yeah, I mean, you know, why would you even give them the opportunity? You know what I mean? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Let's see. Don't you have a deadline for that? No. No, there's no deadlines for that because we don't even have a trial date yet. So, I mean, you know, there's no deadlines for anything at this point. Um, let's see. Didn't the judge set deadlines on motions or did we hear that wrong? You heard that wrong um, because, okay, there's no deadline on motions. Um you know, what he did is he said he wasn't going to he wasn't going to rule on any motions until after he decided whether or not he wanted to be the judge. Um, so we thought that was going to be on the fourth. Right. We thought on the fourth because that's what he said. He said on the fourth he would make a decision by then. Um, but then we got to the fourth. He still hadn't made a decision. So now we're going to the 14th. Um, I'm sure. Look, I'm sure the prosecution's not happy about it either, um, because, I mean, they're trying to rush this thing to trial. You know, they don't want to have to deal with the, the stuff they did at trial. Um, so the thing and, they, you know, it's to their advantage to try and rush me back. But the thing is, is no, I'm not I'm not going to let that happen anyway. Um, so let's see. We have. I don't even think that the judge has decided yet if he's going to do your trial. <laughs> has he? No, he hasn't. Um, and that's what I was just saying. It's like, uh, you know. You know, I, while I believe this guy is just trying to be, he's trying to, you know, do everything right. He's, he's a, like I said, he's a brand new judge. He's trying to make sure that, man, everything is on par. He knows this case has been, you know, highly publicized. He knows that, man, it's been screwed up. Um, you know, he knows that, you know, there's, there's, you know, there's going to be a lot of people watching this. And so I think he's just trying to make sure he does everything correct. 
Um, I, I hope that's the case, you know, but, but again, who knows? Well, I guess we'll see. We'll see when he starts ruling on some motions, you know what I mean? That's what's going to really tell. That's going to tell who he is and what he's going to do, right? Is how he rules on these motions. Cause I mean, you know, if you bust out law, you bust out case law and you bust out the law on them and you know, they decide to ignore it, you know, that, that can be a problem. Um, judge Jones did that quite a, quite a few times prior to trial. That's one of the reasons why we knew, you know, he was dirty beforehand. Um, you know, cause they, we would bust out the law and, you know, it's, you know, the case law and the, the, or cite, you know, whatever statute or cite, even the constitution of the state of Florida, you heard me doing that during trial. I was actually, man, busting out the constitution on him as far as, uh, the victim's rights when I was trying to get it. So Paula could testify, you know, the law is clear, right? You know, they, they, you know, he should have moved that up and he also should have let her testify, you know, via Zoom. He didn't have a choice, um, you know, but, but he, you know, he tried to ignore the law. Let's see. We have, uh, let's see. Okay. That's what I thought. I thought I missed something you know, for a second. Now you're good. Um, when's your next court hearing? 14th. Um, and that's why it's going to be interesting is because, okay, I'm putting that response in before the 14th. And I'm asking the judge to use his discretion because, okay, he, he can use his ju judicial discretion to dismiss the case in the best interest of justice is what he can do, right? And that's what I'm asking him to do because, man, again, if they're not going to, man, if they're going to come in straight line, man, as soon as they come back, man, and it, it just shows they have no ability to be honest. You know, they have no ability to do an honest prosecution here, you know, so we'll see. Um, I think he said that the next one... Uh, by the 14th, and it's the 14th at 1.30. I'm not going to be late. I know I saw somebody put up there, don't be late. <laughs> you know, don't get me wrong. You know, um, no, I have no no intention on being late. And um, I'm very interested. I'm going to be very interested to see what the judge has to say, um, you know, because I'm asking him to do something that you don't see a lot of. Um, but at the same time, this case, man, I mean, has so many different things that you don't see a lot of. Um, you know, just stuff that's totally unbelievable that, man, I'm actually still sitting here. Um, but it's, it's, it's actually the 14th, uh, Salvador. It's the 14th. It's uh, 14th at 1.30. And he did say, though, he will have a decision as to whether or not he'll be the judge at, on that day. Um, he said he might even have it prior, but I've been looking and checking the, you know, checking the docket and I haven't seen him file anything. So as far as I know, he's planning on being the judge. We'll see. Uh, let's see. 14th is Sunday, bro. Ain't no way. It's the 14th. Oh, I got it, man. I just got it off of my, you know, maybe it's something, you know, maybe my phone is wrong, my pretrial, because uh, I did my pretrial today and it said the 14th. So I'll have, to, I'll have to double check that. But um, it might be the 16th then. But um, let me check. I'll check it and get back with you guys. Um, but the thing is, is, yeah, I, I did my, I don't know if you guys know I got to do this, but every Friday I got to check in. Um, so I got to call them up and man, one of the, you know, one of the things they do is they tell me my court date. Um, so yeah, he went ahead and you know, they went ahead and did that today. Let's see. Uh, the trial starts when you find out, let's see if the trial starts and then you find out they are still going to fight dirty. Can anything be done to stop it from coming, coming from a non-lawyer and a dumb onlooker? Oh, Donna, no. First off, that's not a dumb question. And there really are no dumb questions in this whole thing. But I mean, that's exactly what I'm trying to do now is, man, OK, I don't see how they can go to trial without dealing with, man, the lies they told in the last trial. Right now, I, I haven't filed a motion in limine yet. I'm going to do that eventually here. Um, the motion in limine, that's basically, you know, OK, one of the ones I I obviously state is, man, you know, none of this garbage about, you know, Paula being paid off by, by Lauren. Um, that garbage he threw in there at the end, you know, no, he doesn't get to say that, you know, unless he's got some proof he wants to bust out, you know, he doesn't get to say that. You know? And you can tell it upsets me because man, yeah, you know, that one, um, it was just complete and utter garbage. And, uh, the other one was the, the one about the knife. And that's one of the ones I'm going after as far as man in the motion to dismiss. Um, that's, you know, as far as their part in the trial, the motion to dismiss is extensive. Um, that one goes for from the very beginning before I even got arrested because um, they started doing dirty shit even before I got arrested. Um, but, but at the same time, okay. You know, cause when I, I don't know if you guys remember when I did my JOA, um, you know, when I put the judge on blast, I was actually putting him on blast because he didn't handle the misconduct over the entire case. You know, he just ignored it. And, um, 
you know, and really he should have dismissed this case a long time ago. I should have never went to trial. And that's, you know, I let, I put, I let him know that because, you know, don't get me wrong. I knew he wasn't going to give me an acquittal. So anyway, let's see. And yes, thank you, Gabrielle. I'm not going to be late and I do take it with love. It's all good. You know? So yeah. Um, and let's see, double check. I will definitely, che I will definitely double check because it ain't going to be on a Sunday. You're absolutely correct there. Um, let me check out that. I'll double check the date, man. Make sure we're good. So I said the 16th, but could be wrong. You know, let's, let's, let's double check this right now just to make sure. Hold on one second, guys. I'm just going to flip. And let's see what we got here. Because I do have a calendar right here. Let's see what we got. You're absolutely correct in that 14th is a Sunday. So I'm going to assume that, man, it's probably the 16th, if that's what we're thinking. So... The tape must be wrong on the on the phone, but yeah, so it's all, it's going to be on the 16th. Um, but I'll go ahead and uh, clear that up. I'll put the you know have make sure they fix up the the thing, telling everybody it's on the 16th. But um, yeah, so the thing is, is um, yeah, the judge, you know, hopefully he'll have a decision that he's going to be the judge. If not, um, I'm not sure what's going to happen. You know that one. You know, the motions, you know, my motions are keeping on. They're, they're being pushed back as 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 he stalls this. Um, but also so are the prosecutions. So, I mean, we're all getting kind of stalled off here. Um, but I don't think they stand a chance in hell of men getting past the motion to dismiss. Um, I really don't. There's just no there's too much there. You know, I mean, there are, matter of fact, even the one even in the response, these guys are looking at crimes they committed. Um, and some of them are pretty serious. I mean, uh, you know, some of them are life imprisonment serious. Um, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. I just checked the Merrill County docket. It says 416. So there we go. Perfect. Thank you, Salvador. You demand, dude. Um, so anyway, yeah. So 16th, guys. 16th at 1.30. And I won't be late. Um, but it may be the start of the end. It may be the end. And it, man, it may be nothing. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Depends on how he takes my response. Um, but if he's going to start, if he's going to start, man, making, if he's going to actually start making decisions and he's actually going to be the judge here, then I would imagine he's going to start doing it on the 16th. You know, so, and, yep. Uh, say, oh, you have a court date too? Megan, is that what, you know, you have a court date on the 16th? Hopefully it's not for anything serious. Um, and Christine, yes, you can, uh, you know, Again, I told you, man, anytime you want to do an interview with me, I'm, I'm available. Um, I can, you know, make myself available for you. You know, I like hanging out and talking to you. So, we can, yeah, we can do that. Um, and, yeah, so it's like, yes, I will record it again. I'm going to try and record all of them. Um, and I'm sure the prosecution at some point is going to get butthurt enough that they're going to try for another gag order. Um but I, I don't see how they're going to get it. I mean, the, the Supreme Court's pretty clear on this. And man, you know, this case is exactly why trials should be, you know, should be public. You know, I mean, there's too much dirty stuff in this case. And man, you know, by, you know, putting gag orders down, all they're doing is trying to hide their dirty crap. You know, and man, that's the whole reason, man, we're not supposed to have that. That's the whole reason why you, you have a right to have a public trial. You know, just make sure that that doesn't happen. Um. Let's see what else we got here. I'm um, watching the video now. You record it. Yep, I did. I would definitely said I will record it. And be curious to see what happens after being acquitted and what they do with the case. Well, there's not much they can do. Um, you know, once it's done, I mean, if, if I get them to dismiss it with prejudice, it's over. That's it. It's done. Um, and then I move on to the civil posture because, man, we did start some of our civil case. Um, quite, quite, you know, probably about what, three years ago now, something like that. Um, you know, cause we had to fight for the right to preserve Paula's testimony. Um, because, you know, again, Paula was, you know, Paula was sick and Paula, you know, just so you guys know, I mean, she lasted a lot longer than she was supposed to. Um, you know, and it, it was actually fairly amazing there. Um, she, she was given a year to live, um, you know, when she started, you know, when she actually, petitioned the court to be able to talk to me. And, um, and yeah, she lasted, I think it's about, you know, good three years, 
you know, three years after that. So, so yeah, she did okay. Sixth Amendment, they have no right to have a gag order. Well, that's true, but they, they can get a gag order for certain circumstances. It has to be a fairly extreme circumstance, though. Like, they were pretty frivolous with it the first time. Um, and I didn't know enough about the law as far as, the you know, the law is man concerning that to uh, to be able to debate it. And I had lawyers who were supposed to. So, you know, don't, again, the whole lawyer thing, you know, I have, that's why I'm not quite deciding on uh, lawyers right now either. Because I'm finding a lot of things that, you know, that could have been done or should have been done or, you know, we, you know, the options we had, but, you know, we just didn't know about, you know, so, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I guess the, the old adage is, is man, that, you know, nobody can, you, you know, you can't pay somebody to care about your ass more than you do, you know, and that's absolutely true, you know, I guess. Um, so I guess we'll see. But, um, you know, yeah, and the gag order, you know, I'm, I'm shocked they haven't tried it yet either, Salvador. I really am. Um, you know, it's like I've been prepared for it. I have a response for it already, ready to go. And I've got, like I said, I've got plenty of case laws. The Supreme Court's pretty clear on it. Um, but they do have laws in Florida. There's a law in Florida where the judge can go ahead and order that kind of a protective order. But, you know, again, I will argue against it all day long. And I'm sure court TV and I'm sure man law and crime and people like that will join in the fight and man fight along with me because they don't want to see a gag order on this either. Um, let's see. Um, what about the missing suspect then? Would it just be buried? You think, what do you, oh, oh, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about as far as missing suspects. Uh, if you're talking about Anathea Clay, um, Anathea Clay died about two years ago on Christmas Eve. I still don't know what killed her, but man, I know she's dead. Um, actually, I shouldn't say I know she's dead because she could always be whip pro. You never know. Um, but whatever. Um, they don't want cameras in the courtroom. Yep, exactly. I mean, the thing is, is I'm going to fight for those too. the cameras to stay in the courtroom. You're damn right. I'm going to fight for those. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, Megan, for that. You know, for the rest in peace for Paula. Um, you know, I always feel like uh, I feel like she's still here. You know, I feel like, uh, you know, she's still, you know, she's still egging me on, still trying to man get me to fight. You know, um, she was very, very adamant about me fighting. Um, so, and Paula does break my heart. It does. Um, matter of fact, I'm even getting kind of goosebumps now, even just talking about it. But, um, but you know, don't get me wrong. I also promised her I was going to clean house. I mean, I plan on doing that. Because the other thing is, is, you know, it's not just about the civil suits. This is one of the reasons why they're coming after me so hard. It's not just about civil suits. Because, man, yeah, getting sued is one thing. They got lots of money. They can afford to get sued. Um, but, but yeah, I already, yes, yeah, the Salvador's laughing because I already wrote the response. You're damn right. I did. Cause I saw that shit coming. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I'm trying to look, I'm trying to be better than I was at trial. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to play catch up. I'm trying to get ahead of the game. Um, uh, we don't want me to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail either. Matter of fact, uh, you know, I have my, my theories on what would happen to me at jail, and it's not anything pleasant because the sheriff and I are not very good friends. I'll tell you that right now. Um, and matter of fact, okay, because, you know, that's the thing. And, man, yeah, Mansfield, I'm with you there, Gabrielle. Um, you know, Mansfield and Alvarez and Judge Jones all treated her poorly, and I will never forget that. And, man, here's the thing is I also plan on, once this is over, you know, they already know it's not over for me. You know, I mean, not only am I going to sue them, but yes, I am. I am trying to have people thrown in prison, you know, because, man, the things that they did no, they need to go to prison, you know, so we'll have to wait and see. Um, reasonable doubt lives here. Ain't that the truth? Um, you know, I mean, hell, I don't know if you can get much more reasonable doubt than no evidence. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's like I've said this for a while. It's like uh, I've been like, you know, and man, I, I got criticized a little bit about not not just like boldly stating I'm innocent and, you know, at the, at the trial. And maybe I should have, um, I'm just used to saying it is what it is, is, is I'm used to telling everybody I'm innocent and man, not only am I used to telling everybody I'm innocent, but one of the things I'll say is, man, you know, look, you know, there's a reason why there's no evidence. It's pretty freaking simple. It's because I wasn't there. That's pretty simple. You know, it's like they're trying to make all this stuff and man, they, they come up with these wild stories and man, the funny thing is, is if you actually listen to their story at the trial, it doesn't even make sense. Like they still don't reconcile. OK, they don't reconcile. OK, if there's if 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 Travis is saying I have a knife and man, 
saying that Rory has a piece of pipe, right? That's that's what he's trying to say, right? Well, then how does man Rory get the knife and to be able to slip Paula's throat, which he admitted to, and man, you know, again, you know, so it's like, how does that happen? And then have his DNA on the knife, man, you know, as far as, all, you know, Matt's blood's on it, his DNA, you know? So it's like, okay, how does that happen? You know, if, if I actually had the knife. See, stupid stuff like that. Their story doesn't even make sense. But yet, at the same time, man, they think it's good enough to, man, get over on a jury. Um, so I guess we'll see. Um, I'm talking about the prosecution. Do they spent all the time trying to prove an innocent man was guilty. No, I hear you. And it's like Rory was already sentenced and found guilty. State's trying to bring another one to prison. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's funny. Uh, one of the reporters I, you know, I've dealt with over the years, he said the same thing. He was like, he was like, look, man, you know, the math, you know, for me, it was a long time ago. He was like, I knew you were, you know, you were innocent because the math just doesn't work out. All the evidence says two people, all the witnesses, everybody says two people. Right. All the, you know, the forensic evidence, physical evidence, everything says two people video, you know. Um, but the thing is, and they keep on trying, they've got two people, but they keep on trying to get a third, you know. So it's like, you know, they just don't want to look. They just don't want to pay the, you know, pay the price of what's going to happen afterwards. Because, yeah, you know, I know they do this to other people. You know, it's like uh, my little experience here has shown me what they do. And yeah, I'm going to make sure they don't do it to anybody else ever again. That's kind of my little lifelong thing here now. You know, I don't want to ever see anybody else have to go through this. It, it And, you know, as much as I like talking to you guys, it sucks. You know, to, to put it point blank, it sucks. You know, um, nobody wants to be arrested for 10 felonies, including homicide, that they didn't do. You know, it's like uh, that one. That's a hard one. Um, yeah. And, you know, that was another thing that, about the whole Rory thing, because uh, Rory also recanted his entire testimony about me, man, at, at trial. So, man, but at my trial, they didn't, you know, they still went along with that. Um, let's see. He said the perpetrator would be still out there. That's false. That's false. The murderer, Rory, is already in prison. Yeah, he's in prison. You know, but the, the one they always talked about was uh, Anathea Clay, because, man, Anathea, Anathea supposedly set up the crime, and I believe that. I actually believe that she did. Um, the thing is, is, you know, she set up the crime with Rory and man. And yeah, that's, you know, it went from there. But the thing is, I don't, there's, I do have some questions about man, how that went down. But, um, but at the same time, I do believe Anathea set it up. And I, you know, the, the weird part about Anathea is if you notice, they never tried to go after her as a suspect and that she had, what probably as much evidence against her as Rory Wilson did, you know, and yet she never gets arrested. She never gets questioned until we find her two years later um, after they've been telling the court they can't find her. And she ends up in the same house she was, you know, the night of the murder. She still has the same phone number and she's doing a state cat program with, with deputies from the, from the MCSO. So it's like, okay, but yet you're going into court and you're telling us that you can't find her. Yeah, you know, so why would they protect her? That's the question, you know, and that's where things get really funky. And man, the whole case, man, gets into more, you know, more than what's on the surface. Um, because on the surface, you know, it's a pretty simple crime, you know. I mean, it happened, unfortunately, it happens too often, but yeah, you know, but um, when you start getting, you know, why they did this and why they did that, it starts getting real complicated real quick. Let's see, if I was on the jury, there's no way. Uh, no way in the world I would be able to find you guilty. Thank you, Chrissy. And man, me neither. You know, to be honest, it's like, look, I always try and look at it from other people's point of view. Um, and me, you know, I'd like to think I'm a good enough person that I would try to do, do it based on the evidence. I would, uh, you know, I mean, even if I didn't like the person, you know, Penny had some kind of thing for you. So annoying. Instead of doing her job, the, she just blamed the first person. And man, you know, that, that's part of it too, because I think they needed to clean it up quick. You got to remember the whole investigation lasted five days and I think she was trying to clean it up fast. Um, and that's why she picked me, you know, it's like all of a sudden, booyah, there's our white boy. Um, that's my point. GG. All of a sudden the prosecution who tried to prove there were three and now there's only two, they're evil people. Yeah. And I would agree with that too. Um, my thing is, is, I couldn't sleep with myself. I literally couldn't look myself in a mirror if I do what these guys do. You know, I just couldn't. Um, but worry about you only for now. And, man, 
Look, I do, and man, but you gotta remember, I got to look at the entire picture. If I don't look at the entire picture, I miss things, and I'm not trying to miss anything. Um, hopefully, at the end of this, you can do a live on free party. Hell yeah, I'm down. You know, matter of fact, I'll buy drinks for everybody, no matter where you're at. How about that? <laughs> you know, we'll see if we can figure that out somehow. A suck at Mansfield party. Now that, yeah, I'm down for that too. But man, I, you know, look. You know, they're going to lose their licenses, man, eventually. I'm going to get those. Um, but the thing is, is, you know, will he go to prison? That's the catch. You know, we'll have to wait and see. Um, because, man, they have done some things. They have committed some crimes where, man, even Mansfield, he could he could end up going to prison. Um, I can think of one right off the top of my head. Um, in my opinion, Anathea had way more to do with this than they said. Of course she did. You know, there's no doubt about that. You know, again, I again, the question is, is why were they protecting her? You know, I mean, according to, you know, everybody on the street, Anathea, you know, was a was basically a drug addict and, you know, she was a prostitute. Right. So, OK, why would they why would they protect her? You know, I mean, why would the cops actually make it so that nobody could find her for two years? You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's like, you know, that part, you know, you got to think about that. And, you know, we have our theories on as to why that happened, you know, but we don't know for sure because and we're never going to be able to ask Anathea. Right. Um, she can never change her mind, and decide to come back and tell the truth. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we definitely have some theories on that. But um, I do think she was integral in the whole what happened here. So we'll have to see. They will see as soon as they find her that night, they shut all the cameras off. I hear you. And not only that, they let her wander around the crime scene unattended. They don't do a video interview with her like they do for every other witness and every other suspect. Right. She's the only one. And then uh, even when she wrote a confession on the wall, they didn't collect the evidence and they didn't, you know, they didn't show it to us. I mean, we actually had to send a PI over there to get pictures of it, man, two years later, because Paula is the one who told us it existed. Um, yeah. So, yeah, five days. You know, I hear you, man. It's like, uh, you know, that's why I thought at first I thought they were going to let me go. I thought they were going to figure out I didn't do it and then let me go. But it didn't work out that way. Um He's here now while he eats his second dinner. I'm not exactly sure about that one, but okay. And then uh, let's see. And life is short. I hear you, man. Um, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I figure I've always lived my life that way. I've always kind of tried to live like there's there's no tomorrow because there is no tomorrow. No, tomorrow is not guaranteed to anybody. Um, but I'll tell you what, I never thought of it being, I always thought of it, you know, as far as death goes, right? But I never thought of, uh, you know, life in prison. And, man, life in prison, yeah, life is short for that, too, because, man, you know, I wouldn't be the first guy, man, to get tagged and, man, you know, thrown in, in, in prison for the rest of his life. Um, and it's sad, and it happens way too much from what I've seen. Um, but it's like, you know, I mean, I've had to change even some of my views because of that. It's like, you know, this whole experience has shown me that, and it's shown me literally it can do it to anybody. But, man, the bottom line is, is, man, until we can start getting things right, you know, we've got problems in our legal system. I mean, you know, I can't guarantee the people who are, who are in prison are supposed to be there, you know, and that's a problem. Um, so, you know, so I'll be trying to work on that after this, too. I mean, I've got some things planned that, you know, I'm going to try and work on, you know. But, um, yes, I did. Thank you, Christine. I haven't used it yet, but I'm, you know, I'm planning on it because, man, Starbucks does sound really good. Um, Christine got me a, a gift card to Starbucks. And I thought that was really sweet of her. Um, she's been actually really sweet all the way around. And uh, we've done a couple of interviews together, and uh, you know, it's, been, it's been fun. You know, so I'm sure we'll do a few more. Um, but, yeah, you know, she's just a sweetheart. You know, so. And uh, shady stuff. Yeah, there's lots of shady stuff. I mean, there's... <laughs> <laughs> there's a reason I wrote that letter back in 2019 to the judge. Um, you know, it's like, I wasn't crazy. I wasn't delusional. And, you know, no, I mean, I had evidence sitting in my hand. So that's why he didn't say anything about it. You know, um, and I still have that same evidence now. So, man, one of the things I am going to do um, that I haven't, I haven't started. Well, I kind of started, started a while ago, but man, um, I haven't, <laughs> gotten the finishing and I'm going to be doing is putting in a JQC complaint on the first judge. Um, because with him, you know, he did a lot of things over the course of the case and he definitely did some illegal things and he also did some immoral things. So I'm going to go ahead and file a JQC complaint, which is the judicial qualifications commission. 
and see if I can get him removed from being a judge. And I will see how that works. Um, I don't know how his heart keeps beating. He's an, oh, yeah. Talking about, oh, you talk about, man, a Mansfield? Yeah. You know, I mean, straight up, man. You got you to gotta watch the babies around him, man, you know, because they, you know, they might look like a piece of chicken. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I don't know. So it's like, you know, but the thing is, is he's a big boy. There's no doubt. It's like when he meant, you know, that, that, that one where he said I was giving him a, was it a, a was it a, uh, uh, I don't know, an intimidating glance or whatever, you know, what he, when he tried to say that, man, I was looking at him like trying to threatening or whatever. It's like a threatening look, whatever. And no, that was actually, you know, that was a, you know, a what the hell look, you know, and, you know, but, but even the thing he would say that, I mean, the guy's like four times my size. You know, it's like, I mean, dude, I, I'm going to intimidate you. Really? <laughs> you know, it's like, okay. Um, but yeah, so yeah, it is what it is. I know to type the odors. Meg, right. Oh, man. Now y'all talking about how he stinks. <laughs> don't get me wrong, but y'all are getting nasty in there. Because, <laughs> man, oh, man, I don't even want to know. I don't want to know what's up under the folds. I don't know what you find up in there, man. Probably find somebody's car keys, you know, maybe a wedding ring or two. I don't know. But, but the thing is, is, man, no, I don't want to know how it smells. <laughs> you know? Oh, man. And how's my beautiful wife doing? Um, you know, is she, I don't think she's in here. Um, you know, I haven't seen her in here. Um, but no, I've, I've talked to her recently. And actually, that brings up a good point. Because uh, one of the other things we talked about last week is she was going to do an interview with Todd O'Quinn. Um, Todd O'Quinn is a witness in the case, um, kind of a really important witness in the case. And he is now out of prison and he's ready to testify. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put him on if we go back to trial. Um, but she is going to be doing a interview with him. They're trying to work it out. Um, they were supposed to be doing it this week, but Todd ended up having something come up. So. Um, they're still working on that and I'll let you guys know as soon as, you know, as soon as we have a date set for that, you now Lauren will go ahead and do a live interview with Todd O'Quinn and that way you can get it right from his mouth. Um, back and, and on that, you know, while we're on that topic, um, one of the other things that's coming up is, you know, we're going to be making some changes to the YouTube channel. Nothing that really should screw anybody up. Matter of fact, it should make it easier. We're going to try and make it a little more user friendly. And make it look a little cooler, you know, that kind of thing. Um, we're going to do that. And then the other thing we have is we have a uh, we have a new website coming up that because, OK, with YouTube, we got all the the uh, the videos and, you know, we could probably put the audio up here. But um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of files for the case. And there is a lot of, man, you know, different things that people probably you know, I've had people ask me for. Like uh, they want the transcripts from Rory Wilson's trial, you know, which by the way, it costs us ten thousand dollars, guys. Ten grand for those transcripts. Anyway, point being is is no, we will be going ahead and putting that kind of stuff up on the website, um, and that should be opening up probably in about another week. Um, but there's also going to be a merch store attached to it that is uh, going to have all kinds of you know different you know different designs from the case, but it's also going to have some other ones because um, we're. All the proceeds from that, you know, from the merch store, they're going to different causes. Um, some of them are going to come to the case to try and help to offset costs. But then there's also going to be uh, some other causes in there, you know, like, uh, again, some, you know, prison reform and criminal justice reform and, you know, get, and obviously wrongful convictions. Um, you know, we've got some groups that we're going to be go ahead and, you know, put money towards. Hey, there we go. Now, just to let you all know, uh, Tristan Tucker is in here. And, and Tristan Tucker happens to be my son. So it's kind of cool because I've been meaning to call him. So he decides to come on over to come on over and man, hang out with you guys for a second. Um, so hopefully I'll give him a nice big welcome. And, uh, you know, he had to, this was not easy for him. He was a uh, 14 when, when this started, um, I believe. I'm pretty sure, man, that was, that was, that was how old he was. And, um, you know, it, it, it really sucked. Um, you know, it was, he was supposed to be coming to visit me you know, deciding, you know, whether or not he wanted to, how, how much he liked Florida. Um, but unfortunately, man, this thing happened and yeah, it, it, it stole a few years from us. Um, so hopefully you guys, man, give him a nice warm welcome and, you know, 
treat him good because man yeah he is my boy and you know yeah he's always been he's always been a good kid um even now he's not a kid anymore but unfortunately um but but yeah he's still he's grown into a good man which is uh makes me feel pretty good as a dad um anyway so let's see on y'all still rolling on mansfield check you out um 10k that is bullshit uh let's see oh hello little tuck i like that one yeah um no you didn't spell his name correctly um we went a little funky with that man did it with an i um you know when uh when he was named uh his name is tristan michael tristan michael tucker um michael came from his mother's uh brother was name is michael and tristan i'm sure you guys man you know there's some of you have thought about this one before but uh came from legends of the fall i don't know if y'all know brad pitt's character in that one but man uh, tristan's kind of cool you know he's uh he's definitely the cool guy in the movie um but yeah tristan tristan is uh he's, he's you know he's uh he was gonna come to trial he wanted to and um i'm kind of happy he didn't you know in a sense um it would have been good to see him but you know but at the same time uh you know it, it, that's that it's just man it's not good down there it's not good for for anybody involved as far as my family, you know, as far as men, you know, um, as far as kids or anybody coming down there, um, you know, I just don't trust it. You know, I don't trust those guys and, you know, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they're willing to do and I'm not trying to find out, you know, so, but, uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of cool, man, having you guys meet him, um, you know, have him come in and it's like, uh, it's like he's a uh, he's a good kid, you know. I have two I have two children, um, you know. So it's like I have Tyler, which is my daughter. She was actually born in Key West, um, you know. She's a little bit older than Tristan. I'm um, quite a quite a few years older. She just got married not too long ago, about a year ago, something like that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, she celebrated her first anniversary on October. Unfortunately, I couldn't go to the wedding, um, but it was probably more fortunate, you know, that I didn't. But at the same time, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he already knows that one. You know, the one good thing about my boy is, man, uh, he never thought I did it. You know, that part, man, was cool. Um, you know, it's like he knew his dad better. He knows, he knows his dad better than that. You know, I raised him for quite a long time. And, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, he knew, he knows, you know, he knows what I'll do and what I won't. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it's just, uh, I just have to say Ty's face when he talks about Tristan, their union will be a celebration freedom. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I mean, part of me thinks I should have had him come out here by now. Um, but the other part of me is like, again, it, this is not how, this is not how I want to you know, be with my son. You know, it's, um, you know, it's like, uh, you know, this is not like even, uh, you know, my brother, uh, Jeff, he came and saw me, and uh, while this apartment is is very nice, I mean, you know, it's like a, it's still a cell. The bottom line is, it's it's just a it's a fancy cell, and um, you know, I can't leave for the most part, and um, and yeah, it's not it's not exactly a way I want to spend time with my son, you know. So, I guess we'll uh, we'll figure it out one of these days. He's uh he's gotten to the point where he's old enough to drink now, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll have to go out to the bar after this is over. Um, but so what does my, and my son want to do? Well, actually he forever, and I should probably let him actually answer that, but, um, you know, but forever he wanted to be a geneticist, um, you know, and he actually took my advice, even though I was in jail, he actually, uh, took a lot of my advice and, uh, did very well for himself, um, while I was in jail. Um, he, you know, he went to work, he, cause I told him before, um, you know, I was like, to be a geneticist, I was like, well, that's going to, that's going to take some money. And, um, I'm like, you know, I may not be able to cover everything. So, you know, you're probably going to have to work your, you know, work your way through school. Um, and so you're probably not only that, if you get a trade, then you'd have something to fall back on. So it's like, um, you know, just in case, um, cause you know, going to school, you, you know, you can figure out that you don't like it or whatever. Um, but anyway, so, um, yeah, so he ended up, man, uh, he, got his welding certificate. He's been a welder, a fabricator. Um, we actually went into 
you know, business for himself a little bit, kind of followed after his old man that way. Um, started uh, rehabbing old knives, I think is what it was. And now he's going back to ASU, which is where the last school I went to was ASU. Um, but yeah, so he's going to go. I think he actually just started this semester, if I'm if I'm correct. I haven't seen him pop back up again, but man, maybe I maybe I embarrassed him. I don't know. But the thing is, is uh, no, I'm very proud of both my children. Um, you know, Tristan, he's going back to ASU, and hopefully, yeah, you know, maybe he decides to go a different direction. I don't know, but um, but yeah, you know, he's wanted to be a geneticist ever since he was probably what three or four years old. You know, I actually uh, got him a centrifuge once for his birth birthday because man, he wanted a center. You know, what kid asked for a centrifuge? Centrifuge, but whatever. But you know, so I ended up building a lab in his in, in his room and that kind of stuff. Um, but I think that's what he, I think, you know, Sarah, you know, I think that's what he wants to do, still wants to do, you know, as far as I know, you know, he hasn't told me anything different yet. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, when is the interview with Todd Quinn again? And that's the thing is, I don't know when it is and I don't know where, you know, you'll find it right here. You know, I mean, it's going to be on this channel, but, um, but the thing is, is Lauren and Todd are still working out the date. I can't talk to Todd right at the moment. So, you know, they're working that out. Um, once they have a date for us, then we'll go ahead and I'll, I'll go ahead and announce that, man. And we'll make sure that, man, everybody knows. Um, let's see. I don't know. I hope not because I wanted to see that live. Um, did they do the new one? The interview with Todd? No, yeah, we're fine, guys. I mean, nobody's missed anything yet. Um, oh, see, you came back. Oh, you're going to community college? Man, I told you that years ago, first off. Nah. You should have listened to me back then. Anyway, but the point is, is man, no, you know, it's like, okay, no. And that's exactly, okay. That was my point back then is yeah, you do two years of community college and then you finish out your degree at ASU. You know, it's just cheaper. And man, I mean, really community colleges. And I mean, all they'd have you do at ASU is the same thing. You basically do, it's a rehash of high school. You know, you go ahead and, you know, you get all your basic, your, your, was it your general ed requirements out of the way. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. But that's all good, man. You know, I mean, you know, I get it. You know, it's like, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, the other thing Tristan did, it, you know, we didn't see coming is he had to take care of his grandparents, um, you know, because, uh, you know, his grandparents were, were getting older and uh, they needed help. And he's a good boy. You know, it's, you know, he's a good man. Actually, I should say now he's a good man. Um, you know, you got to remember, he's still always going to be. He's always going to be my boy, but at the same time, you know, he's a good man. Um, and yeah, you know, that's the thing is for all the trash that they tried to talk about me at trial. It's like, you know, you know, I did teach him some fairly decent morals, you know, um, at least I tried to, um, you know, I guess like every other parent does. And, you know, my goals, I mean, that actually was my, you know, my two goals for him, you know, when he was growing up as I, I literally wanted to make sure he got a decent education and I want to make sure he turned out to be a good man. You know, other than that, whatever he wants to do. I mean, you know, it's like, you know, whatever makes him happy, you know, he can go into whatever he wants. You know, I love him no matter what his job is. doesn't make any difference. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, my dad was in prison for many years for something that he did do. It's really hard to deal with, but they don't have anything on you, Ty. I uh, know. I know that. I mean, you know, one of the good things about my son is he knew I didn't do it, um, which was cool. He wasn't happy about the situation. I mean, you know, he's still not happy about the situation. I mean, until this is over with, man, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Um, and, you know, it's like, uh, you know, we usually don't talk about the worst kind of things, but, you know, but yeah, he's very, I know he's very well aware. And yeah, he's right. You know, way too expensive. And that's what I was saying. You know, I told him that before. You know, because I, I told him if I had it all to do over again, probably, you know, what I would have done is I probably would have dropped out of high school at 16, um, went right to community college and, you know, got my general eds knocked out, graduated from college at 22 and, you know, went on from there. You know, who knows what would happen then. Um, but, yeah, you know, I definitely uh, I had my own plans back, back then. I had to change them a little bit. You know, th life comes up and then make you change, you know, make you change your plans. Um, but, but it's okay. You know, things, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not unhappy with man, my life other than, other than the, you know, this whole thing, this did not make me happy. Um, but I've tried to make the best of it. 
but it doesn't make me happy. Um, so we'll have to see. Um, I'm not happy with the situation. I'm not even related to you. I hear you. You know, it's like uh, my friends constantly are worried about me. Um, you know, matter of fact, the ones here, you know, the ones here, they were worried that, man, you know, because, I mean, they didn't know whether or not I was coming back. You know, they didn't know if I was coming back or not, you know, so. Um, and I didn't know that either. So it's like, uh, I, I try not, I'm not trying to lie to anybody. It's like, you know, you know, worst case scenario here is really bad. You know, it's, uh, it's life, it's life ending, so to speak. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it's about as serious as it gets. I know I joke a lot about it, but it is as serious as it gets. Um, but it is also, it's my way of handling it somewhat, you know, it's, it keeps me from going crazy. Um, same, I miss my dad too. He passed away now. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't really know my dad. Um, you know, so I, I never really got to know him. Um, yeah, you know, and didn't really want to. Um, you know, he was not a very nice person. So, you know, I, you know, but it also helped me as far as uh, being a parent. You know, as uh, you know, I definitely, I tried to be a good dad. Let's put it that way. I wasn't, probably wasn't always successful. Um, Lord knows I'm not perfect, but um, I tried to be, tried to be a decent, decent father. I'm still trying to be a decent father. It's like uh, that, that job is kind of never ending. <laughs> you know, um, you are always, man, you're, you know, he will always be my son, you know, so. Um, but it makes me happy that he showed up today. It really does, because uh, I planned on calling him. It's like, you know, it's kind of funky, man, having him come up, man, in front, you know, in front of everybody. But it's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I know it's like, I, I miss my children. I miss my children. I miss, I missed a lot of people, man, freaking when I was in, um, and even here, you know, it's like, I, you know, I don't see very many people. Um, unfortunately I also don't have much time. So it's like, it's, it sucks. I have to, I have a lot of work I got to do these days. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry for both of you guys, you know, Angie and Gabrielle, I see what you're talking about there. And, you know, I'm sorry, you know, it's, uh, it's not very, very pleasant news. Um, you know, it's like, uh, I'm not even sure how I'd feel. I'm not even sure how I'd feel about uh, any of that right now. Like, uh, my son, you know, my, uh, I'm sorry, my father, I didn't feel very much when he passed away. Um, but my mom, I probably would, you know, it's like, uh, we don't get along, but at the same time, uh, we probably, you know, it's like, again, she raised me by herself. So it's like, uh, you know, I probably, feel, I'd probably, feel, I'd still probably feel sad about it. Um, let's see. Miles Marine just transferred North Carolina, California. I've been following your story and trial for a while. I believe you're innocent. Sending all the prayers and good vibes for you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. I appreciate that. Um, you know, a lot of people, man, have been telling me stuff like that. And I actually said to, you know, I talked to somebody last night. Um, you know, they, they said the words they said that, you know, it was a uh, pretty powerful and it was, uh, I told them it was like, you know, one of the reasons I, you know, it, it's, I, I'm not used to dealing with people at all. I'm, I'm really not anymore. Um, I used to be fairly social, I guess, but, um, but I just don't, I don't talk to people a lot anymore. And, um, but it is so nice having so many people, um, who are coming up and, and, and trying to be supportive and, and trying to, you know, and they're telling me, you know, they believe in, you know, believe in my innocence and they, you know, and they're trying to help support me and support me in this fight. And, um, it's, it's really, I know it's awkward for me, you know, but at, at the same time, I mean, I really do appreciate it because it's, I was getting to a point where, man, I was tired of being called a murderer and I was tired of man, people hating me, you know, um, a lot of people did. And, um, you know, it's understandable in a, in a sense, but, but at the same time, it's, it gets tiring after a while. And it was, uh, it's really nice to hear those kind of things coming from people. Um, it really is. And it also, you know, it gives me hope, you know, because, you know, look, one of the reasons that, you know, I had to get those cameras in there was to try to keep them from being dirty, but it's also to try to get the word out, you know, let people see what's going on down there. Um, you know, and, and at least, man, at least some people did. And some people saw saw through all the crap, you know, so that's a good thing. You know, and, um, but I do really appreciate, I appreciate all the well wishes and I appreciate the prayers 
And I appreciate all you guys even taking the time to look at it and then, you know, and voice your opinions about it. You know, it's like, um, but for a long time I was alone in this. Um, you know, I mean, I have Lauren, um, but when Lauren and I separated, you know, that, that was a little bit, you know, that's, it was a little, you know, it's just different. Um, you know, we don't, we don't hang out as much and we definitely don't, you know, we weren't working together like we were. Um, we've had our, I don't know, we've had our off and on set with that, but, but the bottom line is, is yeah. Um, have I seen the news on the poly clause case? No, I haven't. So you might want to fill me in on that one. Um, you know, I don't typically, I mean, I look a lot of case law that I do look at, but I haven't had a lot of time to actually check out man, you know, other, other people's trials. Um, you know, I wouldn't mind checking out a few of them. You know, it's just cause, uh, there was one that some, you know, actually it was Lauren. She was telling me that, uh, there's one that's, I should be looking at because, uh, was it the FBI is already digging into the case as far as how dirty it is. And it's, it's very similar to this case. So I, you know, I'll probably have to check it out. Um, let's see. And let's see. I would like, I would rock a, a free Franklin Tucker t-shirt. Yes, you would. And man, don't get me wrong. You'll, you'll get your chance. Cause man, you know, like I said, the merch store is, Oh, by the way, the merch store will be open on Monday. Um, you know, the website's going to actually follow behind it. Um, because, there's a lot more to put on the website. Um, the website is going to have a lot, like I said, all those files that you guys want to look at, all the photographs, all the, you know, all the other evidence that isn't video will be there. Um, and the videos will, you know, the links will be there. But I, you know, I got to admit the, because, um, okay, when you look at the case files on the website, we've got a pretty good interface for it. It should make it easy for you guys to look up anything in the case, um, whether it's a suspect, a witness, a, you know, a cop, any of it, man, you know, all of the information will be there, you know, and all the reports and all the other, you know, the, the transcripts, the, uh, was it, you know, the million and a half reports we got, um, the IA complaints, all that stuff, it'll all be in there. Um, so yeah. And let's see, or maybe a shirt that says, damn you Mansfield. There are some funny ones in there. Um, I'm going to tell you this there, there are some jokes coming up in the, in, in the, in the, in the store. So man, it's like, yeah, there are definitely a few of them in there and I'm still pitching it. You know, we haven't got it yet, but I've still been pitching it, you know, because uh, I still like that whole joke. Somebody had about uh, the whole, you know, the drinking game with fireball and man, every time I say fricking, you know, you have to drink, you know? So yeah, you know, it's definitely, I was, I'm still pitching man that, you know, design that goes, you know, goes along with that. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, but damn you Mansfield. You know, well, Mansfield's got a few of them. I could, I could go, go, go ahead and pitch as far as uh, different ones, man, for him. Um, you know, but yeah, yeah, that man. Uh, you know, it's funny because most of y'all probably don't know who the state attorney is. He's the one who's actually been prosecuting this case, and man, you know, actually making these guys come in and and you know prosecute against me. Um, but uh, his name's Dennis Ward. Uh, he's state attorney, um, and he, you know. For lack of a better word, he's a douchebag, you know, um, you know, straight up. He, uh, this guy, he knows what he's doing is wrong. He knows he's lying. He knows, man, he's prosecuting a dirty case. And, man, yet he won't, he won't let it go. You know, it's like, okay, he thinks that, man, his lies and his bullshit are going to get me convicted. And the thing is, is no, I'm not going to let that happen. And I'm not just going to lay down and let that happen. Um, now, it's funny because uh, I was looking at some of his stuff from not, not too long ago. Uh, so after what you've been through, I can't even imagine how you could trust people. Uh, was the case she was referring to in Idaho? I don't know. Um, but as far as trusting people, here's one of the problems, man. And this is this is one of the things I'm trying not to let ha happen to me. Um, I will never be the same person again that I was. I can't be. Um, but and I liked who I was. Um, but. But at the same time, I'm not going to let them take everything from me and I'm not going to let them change who I am to a point where, no, I mean, look, not everybody did this to me. You know, these people did this to me. You know, that doesn't mean I have to blame the entire world for it. You know, um, there's still plenty of people out there who are good people, good people who are on my side, you know, um, you know, and yeah, there's just there are plenty of other good people out there. I mean, you can't just you can't let, you know these negative experiences um, 
jade you like that. I mean, they, you know, change you like that because if you do, they win. You know, I mean, basically, if they change me into an asshole because, man, you know, I'm now I don't trust anybody else, and I think everybody else is out to get me and all this other stuff. No, you know, it's like if I let them do that, then man, I mean, you know, then they win again. You know, it's like no, I, I'm going to try and hold on to as much of myself as I can. You know, so we'll have to, you know, see how well I do, but you know. I don't look, I don't know if I've gone crazy yet or not, because man, you know, the whole definition of crazy is you ain't supposed to know about it, but yeah, so far I think I'm holding on pretty good. We'll see. Um, yeah. And Christine, I'll get you one, man. We'll, we'll get there, man. As soon as we get, like I said, it opens up on Monday. So you have to see which ones you like, because there's a few different designs I've already seen. So we'll have to see. Um, and so there's many YouTube live drinking games. I got real lit from one time from, you know, it was a good time. I know we were kind of talking about that last time too. We were talking about, you know, cause I can't drink right now, but I can smoke some weed, you know? So if we're willing to demand, you know, do it, you know, puff puff man, every time, man, you know, every time it gets said, <laughs> I, can, I guess I could get real high, you know, but uh, we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, I do like the idea of pitching that one. Cause there's a couple of them I just think would be really funny. Um, you know, there's a few other ones, man. And, you know, there's some other things I'm trying to, to, to pitch in there, too. Um, uh, I don't know what you guys think about this, but, man, you know, one of the things I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm talking to uh, Paula's family and trying to get some designs and with Paula and have the proceeds go to her family um, to help pay for a funeral and help pay, you know, for the costs and that. And, um, and you know, and so that she, you know, again, because I, I would keep it so that, you know, that, they would always get the money basically um, anything that comes out, you know, because, you know, comes out with her, you know? Yeah. I think, I think she'd be happy knowing that she was giving, giving something to her family and giving her something back. Even, even no, she's not here with us anymore. Um, and it would make me feel good too. You know, it's like uh, her family, it's kind of, it, they kind of feel like family in a sense, even though I never met them, but it's, uh, you know, her and I were so close that it's it's just, um, you know, there's not much. I, I'll try and do anything I can to help them, you know, so. And just popping up, watch later. All right, Deanna, it's all good, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's like uh, we'll get, you know, you will get, hold on, you get different judge that's this time correct. Yes, there's going to be a completely different judge. And. Like I said, I am going to be filing a JQC complaint against the old judge. Um, you know, he did a bunch of dirty stuff. And, you know, we're going to go ahead, man, and make sure that doesn't happen to anybody else either. Because that, that's kind of my big thing about the whole thing. It's, look, I can, look, I could worry about my own behind all the time, but I'm not trying to do that, right? It's like, okay, yeah, I'm worried about my behind. Don't think I'm not. But at the same time, man, you know, I want to make sure this doesn't happen to anybody. It shouldn't have happened to me, right? But, man, it shouldn't ever happen to anybody, right? I mean, I don't know where the days went when, man, freaking, you know, back in the old days, they used to do, you know, you needed a clue, right? You know, you actually needed a clue, you know, you actually needed evidence, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, somewhere we got wrong. Hi, hi, D, how you doing? Good to see you. I can't see you, but, man, nice to, you know, see you joining us. I appreciate it. You know, it's like, uh, but yeah, it's like, uh, you know, this whole thing that they're doing, it's like, okay, this whole idea of you're going to arrest somebody, then find evidence, you know, it's like, no, that's not how it works. You know, you shouldn't be arresting anybody unless you're willing to take them to trial right then and there. And don't get me wrong. I, you know, I actually talked about getting a speedy trial at one time. And this is one of the other dirty things they do. Just to let y'all know, because man, just in case you ever go to jail, check this one out. Um, what they do is man. Okay. What they'll do is they'll, Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. You know, I like who you are now. I like who I am now too. I mean, I'm not, you know, I don't hate myself, but you know, that's a good thing. Um, you know, I guess, um, I'm on their side. You know, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, but anyway, so just to let you guys know, um, what can happen and this is what happened to me and okay. So I get arrested for this thing and what, what they do down there and they do this to everybody just to let you, you know, that's why I'm letting everybody know is what they do and this is this is shady and it goes to the um it goes to the public defender's office too is the problem with this is okay you they have uh you have to go to first appearance within 48 hours right
first appearance is when they're they're going to tell you what your charges are. They're going to decide whether or not they're going to ROR you, or they're going to hold you, or you know, or they're going to issue bond, whatever they're going to do, right? Um, so you're going to have a public defender unless you have an attorney on speed dial. You know, even if you have one retained, I mean, you know, unless you got one on speed dial, um, you're probably going to end up with a public defender who's going to represent you in this first hearing, right? And he's going to come by knocking on your cell, or she's going to come by, either one. But man, knocking on your cell door, and man, talking about, hey, you know, I'm from the uh, I'm from the public defender's office. I'm here, you know, you've got to go for first appearance. I'm just, I just need you to sign this so that you know I can I can represent you for this hearing, right? Um, even if you're going to get a private attorney later, you know, we just want to make sure you have representation for this hearing, right? And then they tell you how it's no big deal. It's just going to go over your charges, like like I just said, right? Here's what they don't tell you: is what they don't tell you is as soon as you sign that form. That guy represents you, which means he can sign things for you, which means, you know, he doesn't and he doesn't have to read them to you. All he has to do is sign the paperwork. Right. And what they do is every single person who comes through there, there's a little box on the on the on the form for, you know, for for your court appearances. And what you're doing is when he checks off that little box, it means you waived your right to a, you waived your right to a speedy trial. Right. So they don't give anybody down there a speedy trial. Nobody. And um, the thing is, is um, what I did when I, you know, because there was a time there, I got rid of one of my lawyers. Um, and this was a very, in the very early, early part of this. Um, I go to get rid of my lawyer. And man, one of the things, you know, because Judge Jones was pressing me on, you know, what, you know, what reasons I wanted to get rid of him for. And it's like, well, I don't want to give away you know, my strategy, man, you know, to the, to the prosecution by sitting here stating it on open court and all that. But um, eventually game down to, I told him that, you know, I was looking to get a speedy trial. And he told me, he told me, no, you can't get one. And I, um, and I didn't know any of this about the form and I didn't know about the public defender waiving my right or anything like that. So when he said that, I was like, I was like, your honor, I have a constitutional right to a speedy trial. And he's like, just because you have a right doesn't mean you can invoke it. And it was like, then he told me, man, not, not only would, you know, because he told me at that point, it's up to him whether or not I get a speed trial and he would deny me. Right. So that's one of the reasons I sat here for six years. Um, so um, but the, I just want to let you guys know that because they do it to everybody. So I don't know if they do that in other areas. Um, it's a pretty slimy trick as far as I can see, um, you know, because all you're doing is trying to work your way around the Constitution. And man, you know, look, anybody doing that, it's like, you know, look, we, the Constitution and, and the Bill of Rights and all that, you know, when we're talking about due process rights and all that, right? Um, look, those rights, you will never get, you can never get a fair playing field between the, the state and a person, you know, an individual, right? An individual will always, look, the state can always out money you, they can out resource you, they can out, you know, they can out people you, you know, they can out, you know, influence you i mean everything i don't care if you're donald trump look at him he's got he's got his problems you know because man no you can't have enough money to fight the government it doesn't work that way right so okay you know the bill of rights and man the constitution is supposed to be there to at least give us a fighting chance right that's all it does it gives you a fighting chance is the idea right um you know tries to keep the government in check to some degree right and um you know so yeah. So when they start doing things to try and circumvent those rights, no, <laughs> you know, that's our, that's our fair shot. That's all we get. You know what I mean? That's the only chance we got, right? Otherwise, man, hell, we're, I mean, again, we might as well be Nazi Germany or be, you know, Soviet Russia, you know? So it's like, no, no, no that, that's the thing. It's no, it, you know, it has to, has to be the point where, man, no, we, we get to keep our constitutional rights. We get to keep the bill of rights. You know, you know, I understand that, you know, they're always going to be seeking ways to go around it. But I mean, and they do have ways. I mean, like I said, they, you know, I think I've talked about this before. There's I've seen some huge holes in our legal system that, you know, need to be patched. Um, you know, this whole idea of plea deals and the whole idea of, man, the prosecution being able to bribe witnesses, you know, legally. Yeah, that's a bad combination. You know, so we got to figure something out with that because it's sending way too many innocent people, man, that, you know, to prison. You know, you can't have that. So I'll be fighting for that later. I got, you know, I got to finish this fight first, work on this one now. We'll move on to that. But a lot of the due process violations they did, 
during this trial um, and during, you know, this case, um, it's been, man, they, they basically just, man, I mean, thumb their nose at the Constitution. Um, so, you know, they thought they could get away with whatever they wanted. You know, they think that, man, they're their own country and they can do whatever the hell they want. Um, but, but you know what? You know, um, every once in a while, people like me are going to be assholes and we're going to say no. <laughs> no, you don't get to do that. Um, you know, that yes, you have to man do it by the rules because if you can't do it by the rules, then you shouldn't be doing it. Simple as that, you know? So, um, you know, and I'm glad to see there's people out there who actually agree with me, you know? So it's, you know, it's good. Um, because look, things have to change. You know, uh, I did a lot of advocacy work after I got out of jail and, you know, the thing is, is man, there's too many people, man, going to jail, man, who, who aren't supposed to be there. And we've got way too many people, man. I mean, again, 25% of the world's prisoners are right here in America. You know, I mean, when you look at it and you know, we talk about freedom I and mean, you talk about, man, you know, you know, America, the land of the free, you know, home of the brave and all that stuff. But in reality, if you actually look at the reality of it, you know, we have more laws than every other country on the planet. And we also have more people, more people incarcerated than any other country on the planet. You know, it's like, that's not a good, that's, that doesn't tell me that we're free. You know, it doesn't tell me that, man, that's, that's what we have. You know, it tells me that, man, you know, there's a lot of things going on, but it's not about freedom. You know, so I guess we'll have to see, but I'll tell you what, um, I am kind of devoted to making sure that this, this doesn't happen to anybody else. And, you know, I don't like seeing innocent people. I don't like seeing innocent people go to prison. And I don't like seeing people, I don't like bullies, <laughs> to be honest. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I guess man, I'll be fighting for a while, <laughs> you know, even after this. I guess we'll see. Yes, we do have prisons for profit. And, man, they, they at least made a, you know, made a law, man, to try and get rid of privatized prisons. That's kind of nice, um, you know. But even then, you know, people don't see the big picture. I mean, look. You know, a lot of people, man, think the 13th Amendment, man, abolished slavery. That is completely false. Um, you know, that's just something we teach. Again, we teach our kids, you know, whatever. Um, but no, that didn't happen. Um, you know, 13th Amendment literally took slavery from the private sector. You know, Southerners, man, those plantation owners couldn't have slaves anymore. But it specifically says that, yes, convicts, man, can be put in penal labor. And, you know, so the state basically got rid of privatized slavery and they went ahead and made it. So the state was the only people could have slaves. That's how they have chain gangs and all the other kind of crap they got. Um, but that's the thing is, man, I mean, now they call them, you know, they call them criminals or call them you know, prisoners instead of convicts, whatever. But they call them that instead of slaves. And uh, the way you know that is, man, is not only by the amount of people that we have locked up. And some of the stupid laws we made to lock people up. But um, but the fact that, man, almost every company in America, almost every major company in America has stuff that is made by prisoners who are, I think, even the most that any of them get paid is like $1.42 an hour. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, um, we lock people up, we put them to work, you know, and it's like, you know, so slavery is still alive and well. Just look at any prison, any jail, and, man, you'll find it. You know, it's like uh, just the way it is. And then, you know, while I, I, I have no grandiose hopes here, man, for being able to change everything, but I do know that, man, uh, I'll be voicing my opinions and I will definitely be trying to fight it. You know, I'm trying to level the playing field out again because I think at one point in this country it was probably, probably better, you know. Um, I don't know. But, uh, but I guess we'll see, you know. Yep, that is where the chain gang came from. Exactly. Um, you know, and it is all about money, you know, but that's the thing is, okay, look, we're not supposed to be doing that. You know, we, I, we, I think we figured out slavery was long, wrong a long time ago. And it doesn't matter whether you call him a criminal or whether you call him a slave. If you're taking somebody off the street and, man, you're, you're you know, chaining them up and you're putting them to work, it's wrong, you know. And especially if, man, you know, they haven't done anything wrong. But that's a lot of people don't know, that, you know, after uh, the South, uh, by the way, I was a history teacher, you guys. That, that's what my degree is. So, you know, you have to forgive me here. But um, no, the South, uh, you know, after, you know, after the Civil War, 
Um, that's when they came up with a lot of laws you'll see still see on the books now, stuff like um, loitering, you know, uh, or disorderly conduct or um, I don't know, uh, even jaywalking, stuff like that. But those those laws were all initiated, man, trying to put the newly freed slaves back to work. Right. As you know, as now criminals, you know, so it's like, you know, some of these stupid laws we have, um, you know, they're, that's what the purpose behind them was. And it's still and they're still on the books today. You know, it's, uh, you know, slavery nowadays isn't as much about color as it is. man. again, it's about opportunity and it's about again, they typically target the the lower incomes. Um, hell, I know that's why they busted me. You know, one of the reasons they busted me is because, man, they knew I didn't have a lot of money and I, and they figured I'd get a public defender and I go to prison and it would all get swept up under the rug. Um, they did not see Lauren coming. Neither did I. You know, I mean, you know, Lord knows I, I was shocked as hell that Lauren was the first person who, you know, contacted me. But but she did give me the ability to fight. Um, and even with even with, the, you know, with Lauren's money, um, you can't, like I said, you can't out money the government. It's not going to happen. You know, it's like, you know, I mean, straight up. I mean, if they want you, you know, if, if they want you bad enough, I mean, these guys, man, I don't know how much they've spent on the taxpayers money coming after me, but I'll tell you what, they, they'll spend more, you know, and if they have to go raise taxes, they'll do it. They'll do it, you know, because right now it's all about covering their own butts. You know, it's about them not going to jail. And, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see who wins on that battle, you know, because uh, if I have my way, yes, I'm going to see some people going, going, going to you know, prison for what they've done. You know, it's, uh, you know, that's what things they've done is you know, pretty significant. Um, so it's like, yeah, uh, you know, I'm hoping I'm hoping that I can get the DOJ or, you know, get a federal agency to come in here and start making some arrests. But we'll see, you know. I did, man, promise that I, I did promise Dennis Ward that, man, he would see prison well before I ever did. So we'll have to wait and see. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I try to keep my promises, but we'll see. And let's see. We were talking. We were talking the same thing, Ty. Uh, America be greedy. <laughs> yeah, greedy as F. Ain't that the truth? Um, yeah. Lauren, I don't know about being a saint, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm married to the woman, so I know a little bit, but, um, but no, um, you know, the, the thing is, even for all of our issues and our problems, and we did have a lot of problems and we still do. Um, but the thing is, is, um, I've never taken away what she did for me and the things that she has done for me. Um, you know, it's like, you know, without Lauren, I mean, a lot of people chalk it up to the money I mean, it's like, you know, she does a lot more than money. Um, you know, the money, you know, yeah, that, you know, it helped men, you know, to be able to fight, you know, yeah, that helped. But, um, more importantly, I mean, it was the hours she put in and man, I mean, she put in, uh, I, I, I don't know, an ungodly amount of hours, you know, because I know between the two of us, I mean, we both put in thousands of hours and it's like, you know, digging into everything, trying to figure out what the hell happened, trying to figure out, man, you know, again, you know trying to figure out a way to end this you know but but yeah she um you know she she worked her ass off and still does to some degree i mean you know she uh like i said i don't talk to her as much as you know i'd like to or as much as um you know as uh you know as much as we used to but um but at the same time you know i know she still she still wants me to win and she still wants man this thing to 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 be good you know, she definitely believes in justice. Um, she believes that this is not justice. Um, so she's still on my side. You know, um, well, that's just like any marriage tie. Marriages have difficulties. Hopefully you guys can work it out. I hope so, too. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I married her for a reason. I mean, um, you know, I was, uh, you know, I've <laughs> been in love with Lauren since I was 14 years old. So it's like uh, it's, it, it wasn't wasn't exactly a hard sell for me. <laughs> you know? It's like, uh, but yeah, you know, it's like, uh, she's, I don't know. She still makes me stupid sometimes. It just is what it is. It's like, uh, for some reason she has this ability, man, to, to make me go dumb, you know? Um, and you know, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> I'm even getting kind of, <laughs> kind of flushed even thinking about it, but it is what it is. Um, cops and everybody want to talk about illegal stuff. 
and what everyone else has done illegally. But once it comes out on, you know, comes to them, then the word illegal and they don't want, you know, they don't want to hear it. No, I hear you. I hear you there. Like one of the ones I didn't like is okay with the IA investigation. Like, okay, when I got arrested, they had no problem with man putting, you know, putting it in the paper and they had no problem, you know, telling, you know, telling everybody I was a murderer and all this other kind of crap. Right. But when you do an IA investigation on a cop, you're not allowed to actually, you know, publish that. You're not allowed to go and talk to, talk to the press and tell them those kind of things because, okay, well, we don't want to give pop cops a bad name or whatever. I don't know, whatever it is. Um, no, <laughs> you know, look, my feeling is this is okay. If you're a dirty cop, right? First off, no, you suck real bad. Um, because, okay, while your average person, man, goes and commits a crime, say, you know, whatever person goes and commits a crime, right? Yeah, that's bad. That is, you know, I mean, whatever crime they commit, you know, I'm sure, you know, again, there's a reason, you know, it, it's bad, right? But, okay, but if you've taken an oath not to break the law and to serve the public, and then you betray the public's trust on top of it by going and breaking the law, well, then, man, I, I don't think you should get the smack on the wrist. I think you should actually get, man, you know, you should get something harsher. You actually took an oath, man, not to do it. You know, the you know, the, it's kind of like I did with my kid. You know, if you ask Tristan if he's still here, you know, yeah, I told him, man, you know, even when he was a kid, I was like, man, look, if you break my trust, man, the, the punishment's going to be harsher. You know, which should be on them too. That's the way, I, at least the way I see it. Um, let's see, and they think they just because they cops, uh, lawyers, and, or judges that they're above the law. But unfortunately, no one is above the law, and that's absolutely true. And I agree. Um, you know, that's why, look, I'm not afraid of any of them, you know, I'm really not. And I told them that a long time ago, cause man, look, they threatened me with the one thing I'm actually afraid of. Right. I mean, that's, that's what this whole thing is about. The only thing I'm actually afraid of, you know, I'm not afraid to die. Everybody's going to die, you know, but, um, you know, but being locked up in a little box, man, for the rest of my life. No, that does not sound cool. Um, it doesn't sound like the way I want to live my life. It doesn't sound like much of a life at all. Um, and yeah, so, you know, by doing that, though, by threatening me with that right off the rip, um, no, if you, where are you going to go from there? What are you going to threaten me with? You know, what are you going to scare me with? You know, it's not like, man, you can give me more time. You know what? You know what? I'm looking at 376 years is what I was looking at. You know, something like that without the life sentences. It's like, OK, you know what? Are you going to give me contempt and throw you know, a couple of years on top of it? All right, go go right ahead. Whatever. You know, so, yeah, I, I didn't have much problem with a, uh, I don't have much problem being afraid of them. What's up, man? How you doing, Steve? You now it's like uh, justice, the process, man, just joined the group. And, uh, you know, he's, uh, he's done a lot of help, you know, helping on uh, helping us as far as the defense goes. Um, you know, not only did he figure out a few things by pulling, you know, pulling the case apart, but uh, he's been helping me out with some case law, you know, stuff, man, to, to help me out with the motion to dismiss and hopefully man this uh this response man that they're going to be looking at on the 16th um yeah yeah it is man I, i'm i'm happy you caught it too um you know even uh, better late than never you know you know it's look i don't get mad when people are late you know <laughs> so it's all good <laughs> um, but uh yeah you know he's uh you know steve has helped us out a lot and um you know, just as a process, man, they've, they've run a lot of different um, uh, videos on the case and they've analyzed quite a bit of the evidence and quite a bit of the videos and they found quite a few different things, um, you know, and it's funny because uh, I'm sure he would agree with me here. Um, you know, it's been nice having so many people look at, you know, so many fresh eyes looking at the case, right? Just tearing this thing apart, man, and, and looking at it. And, you know, one of the points I've actually, I've, you know, thought of recently, it's like, okay, it's like, you know, with all these people looking at it, right, even my haters, right, the people, man, who hate me, um, which there's, there's still quite a few of those people out there, man, I mean, I, you know, Lord knows I get my fair share of hate mail, but I'm not going to be up there like Mansfield bitching about it to the judge. Um, the thing is, is okay, you know, even those haters, man, you know, the problem is, is <laughs> they go and they look at all the evidence, if you actually go and tear apart the case, and you start looking at all the evidence, it says everybody's coming to the same conclusion, which is, man, I didn't do it, right? It's, it's very simple. And, man, you know, when you got thousands of eyes looking at the case and tearing it apart and going, well, he didn't do this, you know, that's more people, man, who are now wondering why they're taking me to trial, 
you know, and they're not taking me to trial for justice. Understand that, you know, they're not taking me to trial, man, because they, they're trying to do the right thing here. You know, I mean, hell, you know, when they lied to the jury in the last trial, man, that should have told everybody right then and there, man, that they're not trying to do the right thing. You know, they're not the good guys here. You know, um, you know, it's like, you know, Ward is doing this for his own, his own reasons. You know, he's being, uh, it's his own, you know, selfish reasons, but political, you know, but whatever. Um, but at the same time, no, I'm not willing to go to prison because man, he wants to be a politician. You know, so that's all him. Um, I find the legal system mind boggling because each case is obviously unique, but there isn't really a way I can think of to make the broad strokes of the laws mesh with that uniqueness. Actually there is it's, um, but man, I mean, I can't say it would ever be perfect. I mean, I don't think there is anything such as a perfect system, but, um, but I do think we could do better. You know, I do. Um, one of the things that I do think you can do is man, that judicial discretion, um, they've been trying to get rid of a lot of that. And like, I don't really believe in minimum mandatory sentencing. I don't really believe in, you know, people may, you know, cause it is, every situation is different. And once you make a law, man, so that it says, if you do this, then you get this, you know, no matter what the circumstances are, well, then you're going to find a circumstance where man, you know, person was actually justified in what they did or whatever, and, you know, start getting away from justice again, you know, cause the whole idea is justice. That's the idea. Um, and I also believe, you know, the other thing is I believe we have too many laws um, that we have way too many laws. Um, we try and regulate everything. Like I said, we talk about being free, but I mean, I bet there, I bet you guys out there, and we'll go ahead, man, we'll make this bet. And I'll tell you what, man, I'll send a beer to whoever, man, whoever gets it, you know, gets me on this one. But I mean, tell me one thing in this country that's not regulated by law, you know, from the air we breathe to the food we eat, to the water we drink, to where we poop and pee, you know, to, you know, to going and making little, little mini, mini me's. Everything we have, man, is, is regulated by law. I don't think there's anything out there that isn't, you know, and that doesn't sound like freedom to me. You know, it really doesn't. Um, look, you know, yeah, I mean, for, you know, for example, Again, it's like, you know, this whole this whole crime, right, was um, based on drugs, right? Um, that's, you know, that's the story, right? And I believe, you know, I believe that part of it, right? Um, and the thing is, is okay, but uh, drugs in and of themselves don't hurt anybody. You know what I'm saying? It's not, that's not what happens. Um, people, man, who are messed up on drugs do go out and do stupid things. That's true. Or, you know, people who are drunk do the same thing, go out and do stupid things. Um, but you don't arrest them because man, they're drinking, you know, or you don't arrest them because of the drugs, What you arrest them for is the stupid things that they do afterwards. Um, you know, cause that takes away all that crap, you know, it, it, it's it, this whole idea that you're going to prevent crime by being, uh, was it, uh, there's a movie they did about this where man, where they could see man into the future or whatever, and, you know, see that you were kind of going to commit a crime, you know, whatever. Well, just because, man, you're drinking doesn't mean you're going to, man, commit a crime. Or just because you're doing drugs doesn't mean you're going to commit a crime. Those things, man, those are those are what I call, man, victimless crimes. And I don't like those. Um, I think those are, we got too many, way too many of those. You know, where no, there's no victim, but, man, somebody's going to jail. You know, so. But I think we need to get back to the simple stuff. You know, look, you know, don't hurt people. You know, don't, man, go out and, you know, assault people. Don't murder people. Don't steal from people. You know, those are victims. You know, so that's when you actually hurt somebody else. You're infringing on their freedom at that point. And at that point, yeah, you've committed a crime. You know, you should, probably should, man, do, you know, you should do some punishment. You know, what, what, whatever punishment we decide, you know, as a society, we, you know, we think is right. Um, but, yeah, I think at that point, man, you've committed a crime. And yeah, you should be punished. But anything other than that, if you haven't hurt anybody, you haven't done anything. Well, look, freedom means you have the right to be stupid, too doesn't mean you have to make all the right decisions. Um, you know, you have the right to be dumb. I'm not, I'm never going to tell somebody that, you know, jacking some heroin is man freaking a good idea. You know what I'm saying? But do I think that it's their right to do it? Sure. You know, it's, it's their right. It's their body. They're not hurting anybody. Let them do what they're going to do. Now, if they go and commit a crime after that, they go steal something, man, to go pay for that heroin. Now, man, you've hurt somebody else. You've committed a crime. You need to go to jail. You know, so I don't know. You know, just telling you guys, man, my kind of thoughts. But, um, you know, because it is a lot of, these are big issues we're talking about here, and they're not easy. 
um, especially, you know, believe it or not, we break the law on a daily basis. No, I would agree. I would, I would totally agree with you. Um, that's why I said, man, I mean, they have laws on everything. You know, I mean, I mean, you can't I don't, I don't think you can actually live without breaking the law. You know, I mean, they, I just don't think you can. I mean, it's like there's so many laws on the books that we don't even know. You know, so you wouldn't even know you're breaking the law. But then again, you know, ignorance of the law is not an excuse. Right. You know. So anyway, but the point is, is, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything out there that um, that is not regulated. And I do think like just, you know, the process is saying is that, uh, you know, yeah, we probably all break the law on a daily basis without even knowing it. You know, so it's just a matter of whether or not they decide to come after you, which, you know, again, this country, you know, look. You know, it's not perfect, um, and we I don't think we've ever lived up to our own ideals. But I'll tell you what, we could. It's up to us, you know. I mean, we can decide to do that, you know. But, I mean, they were good. You know, the original ideas are good. I'll give them that. You know, it's uh, this whole idea of all men being created equal, you know, and, uh, you know, that, you know, we're all going to be seen equally under the eyes of the law and that the government isn't going to be allowed to push us around. You know, I kind of like those ideas, you know. Um, uh, you know, somewhere along the lines, man, you know, it just gets screwed up, you know, and uh, we've got way too many laws on the books and got to way too many people in prison. Anyway, so uh, rather than the judicial discretion, what would you do? Have a jury decide? Would you remove things like the minimum max sentences and make one sentence fits all? Nah, you can't make one sentence fits all. I mean, that doesn't work. Um, the jury thing, I still like the idea of a jury. I really do. I like the idea that, man, you're being judged by by the community, not by not by the government, so to speak, because, um, man, you got you got always got to keep that check and balance in there. I, I do believe in checks and balances. Um, one thing I don't believe in, though, is life sentences. I, I think life sentences are stupid. I mean, you know, literally, it's like, OK, I think of it as, again, just like a parent, like, again, since my son was here, um, you know, you don't punish your kid you know, for a lifetime, right? You know, no matter what, you know, again, whatever they're doing, you know, you know, you punish them commiserate to the, to the, the infraction, right? Um, whatever the punishment is, if, if they're going to be, you know, grounded for two weeks or whatever, you know, but you do it based on man, what they did. Right. And no, the whole idea of it is that you punish them and then they know what they did was wrong. And that man, you know, they come back and they don't do it again. That's the idea. Right. And that's supposed to be the idea with prison, but that's not how we treat it. Um, you know, we treat it, you know, we look too much at the punishment aspect of it and not the rehabilitation act, you know, aspect of it. You know, um, you know, we think prison is supposed to be nasty. It's supposed to be hard. And no, that just makes it, man, that all you're doing is making you know, more criminals. You know, it's like, uh, again, you know, the rehabilitation idea, I definitely if we're not going to do that, then what's the point? You know, I mean, if we're not going to try and rehabilitate anybody, what's the point of throwing them in prison? And if you're going to throw them in prison for the rest of their lives, you know, what's the point of that? You know, I mean, they're not it's not they're not getting an opportunity to learn what they did was wrong and then come back and try and make it right. You know, um, you know, at that point, we're just literally we're engaging in, a, a, you know, long term torture. I don't know, you know, because, man, if you're not going to let them out, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't doesn't really matter, does it? Um, so yeah, jaywalking. Yeah, that's one. I, you know, I've actually been busted for that before. You know, it's another area where the cops were kind of funky. Um, you know, I did a lot of traveling all across the country, so I've kind of gotten to see different areas and how they handle things. But, uh, you know, Mesa, Arizona, they bust guy busted me for jaywalking because I was a foot outside the crosswalk at three o'clock in the morning walking across the street and, and had the nerve to tell me he was doing it for my safety. I'm like, do you see any cars out here? <laughs> you know, it's like you got to be kidding me. Anyway, equal protection under the law is a nice thought. I'm with you, and I'm with you that it doesn't work that way. Um, as long as there's you know super PACs, you can forget about that. Like I said before, it's all about the money, and you know, unfortunately, it always is to some degree. I mean, look, you know that's why again that's one of the reasons we have these laws to try and protect us men from you know from government. Is because look, as long as people have power, it always corrupts. Um, there's always going to be man. Look, there's going to be good and there's going to be bad. There's going to be people who actually want to get in there and help other people, right? And try and actually, you know, put laws in in play, trying to help people. 
Um, and then there's going to be people out there who are the ones who are trying to dominate. You know, they want to, you know, use it as a way to man control other people and a way to man, you know, move themselves up the ladder. Um, you always have both, you know, and the thing is, is, you know, luckily, you know, we, we can talk about these things and then try and, you know, figure out ways to keep the bad ones, man, from doing that. You know, it's, um, you know, cause yeah, you know, uh, people in high positions of power, abusing that power. Uh, we historically have seen that that's been bad. <laughs> it ends up being bad for everybody. Um, but we'll have to see. You now it's like, again, I don't think I'm going to solve all the world's problems or all of life's problems, but, um, but I do know a few of them that I can try, you know, and I'll definitely make my efforts. Um, let's see. And life sentences is the issue I was referring to when I asked if you heard the news about the poly clause. No, actually, no, I, I, like I said, I haven't heard about the case, so I don't know. But um, I'll go check it out, you know, you know, because uh, I don't know, I don't know the, enough about the case to be able to to, to opine on it. But, but at the same time, uh, you know, I'd be interested, you know, because if I'd love to see, I'd love to see life sentences go away, you know. Again, now there are people who are not, you know, there is no ability to rehabilitate them. Um, I don't know what you do with those people. I mean, there are some people, man, out there, the, you know, the Ted Bundys of the world, you know, that can't be rehabilitated. Um, I, you know, I don't know what our decision to do with them would be, but, but at the same time, I, you know, that's a very small percentage of people. Um, there's not very many of those serial killer types out there, you know, um, but, you know, but yeah, I mean, we still have to account, we'd have to account for them too, you know, but, um, but nah, most people are not on that level at all. I mean, hell, you know, you look at the, was it the guy from Pirate Bay got what, three life sentences or something stupid like that? You know, he gave this guy, man, guy's never actually done anything to anybody. All he did was come up with a piece of software and he got life sentences for it. It's like, uh, you know, I think we're pushing it here. Um, but, yep, money, money, money. <laughs> baby need baby. Baby needy baby. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, man. Nah, that's why, man, I mean, look, you know, money is uh, another one. You know, that's, I've gotten a kind of weird um, reaction with that one too. Um, Cause look, it was, there were people who, when, you know, things went, you know, were going bad between me and Lauren, it was like, you know, they were telling me, you know, Oh, well you should just shut your mouth man, hang in there for the money. And all this stuff. It's like, I never wanted the money to begin with. Right. I can make money. You know, no, it's um, the thing is, is um, now it's, it's people, they place too much value on it. And, um, you know, obviously we need money. I mean, I'm not saying we don't, um, but, you know, but at the same time, man, it's not everything. It's not your family. It's not your kids. It's not, man, you know, it's not, you know, people you care about, you know, they should always, man, they should always matter more than money, you know, at least my, again, my opinion, you know. Yeah. You hear that Mansfield? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's funny because man, you know, the judge is a douche. I mean, you know, Alvarez wasn't much better, but man, y'all really keyed in on Mansfield, didn't you? <laughs> it's like, good God, that man, man, nobody liked him. I don't know. But it's like, I'm not the, you know, I'm not saying, man, I'm like, I'm, I'm right there with you. He's, I'm the one he's trying to bully. So, man, you know, it's like, you know, I'm not, I'm not his biggest fan at this point. Um, but at the same time, it cracks me up some of the jokes I've heard about this guy. Um, you know, so it just is what it is, but you know what? He'd probably be a lot more likable if he stopped going after trying to prosecute innocent people. Now he could always use the excuse that it's his job that, you know, I'm just doing my job. You know, I'm doing what my boss tells me to do. Well, look, dude, it was your job. You know, look, it was your decision to take that job and man, do what that boss is telling you to do. And you know, he's dirty and you know what he's telling you to do is dirty. So man, why don't you just quit? Like all the other prosecutors did. You know what I'm saying? Because Lord knows there isn't, you know, you guys probably don't know this little factoid, but there isn't a single prosecutor that's worked on this case that still works at the office, you know, except for the ones that went to trial. And I'm not even sure Alvarez is still there, you know, because man, I haven't seen his little head pop up out the gopher hole yet, but, um, but yeah, Mansfield, he's still there, but every other prosecutor that's been on this case, man, has either, you know, had to resign or has, uh, you know, actually done it 
on their own, you know, left on their own. So, because you can't really win this case without, you know, without lying, without doing dirty crap. And man, you know, look, that's, it's up to you if you want to risk your license doing it. But man, you know what? We've been pretty good at catching them. So we'll have to see. Oh yeah. The pirate, yeah. The pirate Bay guy. Yeah. Yeah. You forgot about him, huh? Right. People shouldn't uh, shut down their, shut their mouth. Like you've known Lauren since you were kids, you knew her before she made. Yeah, I know. And that's one. Don't get me wrong. That's one of the things I told her when we first uh, when, <laughs> when we first started talking. You know, so, you know, started our relationship. I was like, look, you know, I know a lot of people kiss your ass, but I'm not going to be one of them. You know, it's like I, you know, I talk, you know, like I knew you when I was 14, and man, I talked to you, you know, that way. And then I'm I'll tell you what I think now. Same way. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Um. Um, am I eating? Yeah, I'm man, actually <laughs> I'm worried about getting fat right now. Um, I have a friend who's been man freaking making me food and man, you know, just keeps on feeding me. It's like, eh, you know, it's like I'm worried about getting. I'm worried I'm gonna have a quite a quite a gut when I go back to court. I will see. Um, it's not anything but a tool, and I agree with you there, Megan. That's it. It's just a tool. You know, it's not. You know, it's not everything in this world, and it's you know if. if you know, I know there's a lot of people out there who, who, you know, think that way. They think, man, that money is everything. And they think, you know, money can actually buy happiness. Um, I don't, I'm, not, I'm just not one of them. You know, um, you know, I even told, uh, I told Lauren, you know, when we first hooked up, there's a couple of things I told her. It's like, one of them was that, you know, look, I don't, I don't particularly care about our money at all. I mean, yes, it's helped as far as this case is going. That's true. But, um, but no, it's like, if, uh, you know, if we do end up getting divorced, hell, I'll leave with a freaking backpack. I don't really care. It doesn't matter to me. I can always make money. Um, I can't, I can't replace her. That's for sure. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I can make more money. I can't replace her. You know, so that's the way I look at it. Um, anyway, so let's see. Every time I see Mansfield in your videos, I'm like, huh? wow, he's really sweaty. Well, yeah, you would be too. I mean, the guy's the size of a polar bear, you know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, and, and he's in Key West, Florida. You know, it's hot down there. You know, I don't know. You know, I mean, you know, he's a big dude, you know. And, man, when y'all started talking about the stink under his belly, I'm like, oh, you know, uh, I still can't get that that idea out of my head. Anyway, but that's beside the point. Um, and I don't like bullying or not talking or taking responsibility. No, I don't like either one of those things either. Right. And, you know, I don't like the fact that, yeah, that's exactly what the prosecution's doing and not even just them. I mean, you know, they're not the only ones here because the sheriff, I haven't forgotten about him either. You know, um, I, you know, I dug up in his butt too, a man for a king. Let me tell you, man, that man, oh yeah, he's got a lot of that skeletons, his closet too. But, you know, it's funny, you know, but see, and I have a problem with that. I really don't like dirty cops. I don't like, uh, I don't like dirty prosecutors, dirty judges, anybody who works for the public. Um, because look, the public really does need the good guy. We really do. Um, and if you're not going to be the good guy, then don't take the job. You know, I mean, that's it. You know, just don't take the job. Um, did the judge decide if he's recusing yet? I came in the, no, actually he hasn't yet. Um, you know, at least as far as now, as far as right now, um, 16th, we'll find out, uh, you know, so, as, uh, Gary was talking about, you know, we, we figured out the court date, <laughs> But uh, the 16th is when we'll find that out if he doesn't file something sooner. I haven't seen anything in the court docket yet, so, man, we'll have to wait and see. Um, we need someone like Spider-Man. Spider-Man would be cool. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I always thought it'd be cool to be Spider-Man. Don't get me wrong. Um, I like the one in the movie, though, where, man, you know, he doesn't have the the web slingers that, that run out, you know, but, but, but then again, it kind of makes him, you know, a little bit too powerful. Um, but, you know, a funny thing is, though, the whole superhero thing, eh, I always thought we need, you know, my favorite superhero was always the Punisher. And, you know, so, yeah, you know, we know what he would do with, the, you know, with Mansfield and, you know, Ward and all that. Um, you know, he he was the, uh, was it the first anti-hero, you know, so, you know, but he was always my favorite. Uh, Robin Hood, yeah. Well, you know, you know, it's like, I don't know. It's like, uh, I don't know what we need. I know, I know it's like, uh, I think the older I get, I, I start realizing the less I actually know, you know, I don't know. It's like, 
I don't know if I'm getting dumber or just that, you know, that I'm just realizing how dumb I've been. Um, I don't know. It's just, uh, I know as human beings, as a human race, um, we're not as smart as we think we are. I do know that, you know, and, um, you know, I don't know, you know, there's no perfect thing, you know, there's no perfect ways to live. There's no perfect system, no perfect anything. Um, but I do think that one thing that, man, I do, I try to do, um, I can't say I'm perfect about this either, but I try to do what I think is right. You know, um, you know, even if, even if everybody tells me it's wrong, you know, if I think it's right, if I think it's the right thing to do, man, you got to be true to yourself. You know, um, yeah, Punisher is pretty badass. <laughs> you know, I actually, uh, yeah, I, I did have the comic books for a while there and, you know, I like the movies. Um, but yeah, you know, I always like the fact that he didn't have any superpowers. This guy has no superpowers except for his brains and, you know, his, you know, his, you know, regular old abilities, you know, um, but, you know, but yeah, he was, but he, yet he beat up on quite a few of the superheroes. So whatever, you know, I guess we could go ahead and compare. Um, but yeah. And let's see. Yup. And have shit last five years from being good to others. Yep. Well, and yeah, it's like, uh, you know, being good to others is man, you know, that is one of the things I try to do. You know, it's like, um, you know, I don't try to be, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure sometimes I am. I mean, I'm sure sometimes I'm an asshole, you know, but I don't try to be, you know, um, you know, and there are times, man, I actually, a friend of mine and I were talking about this because, okay, where I grew up in Philly, um, you know, back in the old days, because I am getting to be an old man now. Um, no, if you were going to talk shit or you were going to like insult somebody's girlfriend or you were going to do this or that, yeah, you better be willing to, man, you know, put your hands up and man for a king or take the shot that's coming. Um, you know, nowadays, man, you know, people aren't like that. You know, nowadays, man, people are scared to get it, you know, scared to get an ass whooping. Um, but you know, my thing is, is okay. You know, there's been times, man, where I've been that dude where I've had a little too much drink and I probably said something I shouldn't, you know, I, you know, I made some joke or some, you know, I did, you know, said something I shouldn't and I was the one getting popped. And there's been times where I've just literally been like, okay, you know what? I had that coming. You know what? You know, I apologize to the person. I was like, you know, I had a little too much drink, and man, yeah, I was getting a little stupid there. So I, I had that coming, um, you know. But most people don't do that now. Now it's, you know, you're crazy, man. What's wrong with you? You need some help, you know, all this other stuff. No, what you need to do is stop talking shit, you know. That way you wouldn't get, you wouldn't have that problem, you know. But uh, you know, but and yeah, I don't know. These days, man, that seems like uh, more and more people, man, are just, I don't know. It's like uh. You know, they think they can just do whatever they want, man, and nobody's going to do anything. I don't know. Um, yep. And let's see. Thank you again for all you are doing to keep Paula's memory alive. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, how am I not going to? Um, look, Paula's going to be with me for the rest of my life. Um, that's just the way it is. Um, you know, I love Paula dearly. And I still do love Paula dearly. And, um, you know, and no, I'm not happy with what happened when uh, when I was down there. I'm not happy with the way they treated her. I'm not happy with, man, how it ended. And I really do miss her a lot. And, um, and yeah, but I'm going to try and uh, I'm going to try and make things right. You know, I'm going to try and make things right for her, um, you know, at least as much as I can. And, yeah, I'm going to keep my promises that I made to her, um, you know. But yeah, you know, I do miss her a lot. And, uh, you know, it's, and yeah, uh, keeping her memory alive isn't going to be exactly a problem, at least not for me. Um, you know, she did some, she never saw herself as amazing. Um, she never saw herself as a hero. Um, but I did. So, you know, because she didn't have to do what she did. She didn't have to, man. You know, she, you know, she only reason she did it, man, that's why it offends me so much that Mansfield. You know, tried to, you know, that bullshit man of fucking about Lauren paying her off or whatever. Because, look, the only reason, you know, the only reason that she did it is because she thought it, it was the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, she knew I didn't belong there. And she knew that, man, she, you know, she didn't, you know, she didn't think I belonged there. And she didn't think I did it. So, man, fucking, yeah. You know, so she stood up and said something. And she did it while she was down there. 
And man, you know, again, these people aren't nice. You know, they're, you know, again, you know, I was always worried about her down there. And, um, but at the same time, you know, no, the fact that Mansfield tried to take that from her and tried to twist it and tried to man, you know, again, tell a bunch of bullshit, man, to try and man win his case. It's like, no, you know, again, you're not the good guy, bro. You know, when you're, you know, and they're, they're trying to claim that they're out there for the victims. I don't think I heard them man, met, mention Matthew Bonnet's name once. You know, I think I was the only person man mentioned the victims, um, at least in any kind of good way, you know. Um, but yeah, no, he, uh, he really upset me with that whole thing. You know, it is what it is though. I'll, I'll take care of that in time, you know, but I'm not going to forget about it. Uh, no, and I know his fat ass is actually watching this somewhere. So, you know, he's probably sitting here, man. He's either watching it now or he's going to watch it later, but I'll tell you right now. Yes. I promise you, I will not forget about it. And man, I'm not going to forget the way you treated her. and I'm not going to forget what you did. And yeah, I am coming after you. Simple as that. You know. Um, so, but I am not, not in any kind of, oh, by the way, not in any kind of threatening sense, just to make this clear, because man, fucking Lord knows, man, I don't want him going crying to the judge saying that, man, he's being threatened. No, no, I'm talking about taking away your license, fat man, you know, and maybe, maybe, you know, getting you put in prison. How about that? You know, I'm not going to threaten you, man, freaking as far as man, any other, any other bullshit is concerned. But legally, yes, I will go after you, and I'm going to. Sorry, you know, you fucked up. Anyway, so, um, sorry about that, guys. Man, it just it got me, um, got me uh, a little emotional there because, uh, like I said, I, I wasn't happy about any of that. I'm still not. Um, so, but um, and yes, he deserves it. And it's like, look, he knew what he was doing was wrong, and he knew the way he was treating her was wrong, and he knew, man, with those lies he told the jury were wrong. I mean, he knew that, it, look, in his, you know, I know in his, in his, you know, he's still a human being, I got to assume, right? So he has to know that, man, freaking sending me to prison when you know you're lying, you know, yeah, that's wrong too. You know what I'm saying? And, man, how he can even look himself in the freaking mirror, I have no idea, you know, but I know I couldn't be him. You know, there's no way in the world, you know, so. But, um, yeah, so let's see. Uh, Batman is, is too good for Mansfield. You would have to call me an awkward. <laughs> Prison would be but be would be beautiful, not scary. That really uh, what means uh, so much. We miss her so much, you know. Too thank you, and man, yeah. I mean, it's like uh, you know, and um, and that's the thing is most people don't you know a lot of people don't know the good things about her, man, and how special she really was. And I'm going to try and man, make sure that happens, you know, um, you know, because, yeah, because she is the hero in this whole thing. A lot of people think it's Lauren. You know, Lauren is one of them, you know, um, but but yeah, you know, Paula, Paula stepping up like she did. I remember sitting there watching it, you know, like watching her doing, you know, interviews and stuff. And uh, I wasn't allowed to talk to her. And, uh, and I was just like, I couldn't believe that she was actually stepping up like that. And um you know, and actually trying to help me, you know, it's like, uh, you know, and just because she knew I didn't do it and knew, you know, knew I didn't belong there. And, uh, and man, you know, the funny thing is, is she thought it wasn't special, but I told her and man, maybe this is, maybe I'm just jaded. I don't know. Um, because she just saw it as the right thing to do. And I was like, well, you know what? A lot of people these days don't do the right thing. You know, even, even if they know the right thing to do, they don't do it. And it's like, you know, so actually doing the right thing does make you special. You know, it makes you unique um, because, look, there's a lot of people, man, who, you know, they just don't want to get involved. They don't want a man, you know, they don't want the, you know, the time of their life taken away or whatever. Um, but she wasn't like that, you know, and no, she didn't do it for any kind of money. She didn't do it, man, for him because she was bribed. She didn't do it, man. She didn't do it, man, because she wanted to be in a paper. She didn't do any of that kind of crap. She did it because she thought it was the right thing to do. And man, you know, and her and I became really good friends over over the couple years that, man, you know, we were allowed to talk. And, um, you know, and I, I got to see how special she is. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful I got to see her before she passed. So, but, um, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, putting a smile on my face with that one, though. It's like, uh, yeah. 
she uh she did push longer to say a lot you know i'm not going to tell you what she used to say because man it's like you know it's like uh she was putting way too much you know she was putting way too much importance on me you know but it was like you know some of the things she used to say was uh you know, i don't know she um she made me blush anyway but that's beside the point but she definitely did have the um tenacity and she did have uh some fire in her gut boy because uh there were times man i've had a few times when paula yelled at me and uh <laughs> you know <laughs> for a little woman you back the hell up you know that's for sure um so it's like uh you know it's like you know she uh she was something special but um anyway so let's see we got most of this stuff for man we know the 16th is we're going to figure that out um we already talked about the website. It's going to be coming out in about a week. And we're going to make some changes on the YouTube channel. And, yes, you'll be able to go ahead and buy those free Franklin Tucker shirts, man, stuff like that, man, soon. Because that, the was it the merch store should be open on Monday. So Monday, you can go ahead and do that. And there's also going to be some ones in there for some other causes, too. So, you know, it's like uh, we're not just keeping it solely to, to the case. You know, so, you know, I know some of you out there have... Um, you know, beliefs and, and, you know, and supporting some of these other causes. Uh, you know, again, we've been talking about them tonight, you know, we've been talking about, you know, wrongful convictions and, you know, uh, prison reform and stuff like that. Um, you know, our country isn't perfect and Lord knows uh, we could, you know, there's people out there who need help, you know? So, you know, if you feel, if you feel up to it, you know, check it out. Uh, we'll go ahead and make sure you guys know, know where it's going you know what the address is and you know, all that stuff for it later um you know like i said we're going to do like a grand opening i think on monday um it's the idea so you can go ahead and check it out and see what kind of designs we have and you know, yes we do have one you know there is some mansfield gear in there you know so man you guys might want to check that out you know so you know i'll you know say you know there's a there's a few funny things in there so anyway um um as far as oh the the stuff in the store, um, as far as it costs, I mean they're all different things. Uh, there's a lot of different products in there, um, and there's actually some really I mean high quality stuff in there. Is, you know because we're doing it through uh, was it one of these distributors or whatever. But the thing is is um you know there's like uh, like Adidas is is some of the brands uh, I know. Was it um, uh, Under Armour's in there? Uh, Champion. I mean you know as far as the clothes go, I know you know some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, there's some good designs in there and, you know, I think, I think you guys are going to get a kick out of a few of them. So, um, and yeah, you know, like I said, it'll go to a good cause at least, um, you know, so yeah. I mean, I'll be rocking at least a couple of the shirts. I know that, you know, so we'll have to see her man, you know, rocking the, rocking the hoodie. Um, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, guys, um, I think it's about that time though. We, man, man, we're going two hours again two hours y'all been listening to me for two hours you know i mean god damn you know i don't even like me that much no i'm kidding um you know but i'll tell you what um you know it's not, it's good to talk to you guys again good to see you guys and look we'll work out some of this stuff you know as we go along here um i don't think i'm going anywhere as far as it goes i don't I definitely don't think i'm going to prison i'm gonna sure as hell put up a hell of a fight so and <laughs> Yeah, we'll see what happens. But um, you know, having you guys on my side, I feel <laughs> a lot, a lot better. You know, it's like, um, look, I I wasn't gonna give up no matter what anyway. I'm I'm kind of hard headed like that. But um, having you guys, man, having you guys around, helps keep me motivated. Help it helps keep me on point. Helps keep me on time. You know, so <laughs> you know, I'll take that too. Um, and you know, the prayers and the love you guys have been showing. You know, I'll take that too because it's like it is so much better now. Um, just even that little bit, you guys have no idea how much that helps. Um, you know, not being, not having everybody hate you and not have everybody, you know, calling you a murderer. You know, definitely man helps. Um, so thank you, you know, everybody. And um, anyway, I'll let you guys go and um we'll go ahead and make sure man you know you get all the info that man on all that we'll go make sure we have the you know, website opening and the you know the um uh the store opening and the and we'll go ahead and post the 16th for everybody to know too just because you know i'll forget by you know another couple days so 
Um, yeah. Good night, guys. And I hope you guys have a great weekend. And we'll talk to you later. You know, we'll see what happens on the 16th, too, because whew, that response is going to be scathing. You know, I don't think Mansfield's going to like that too much. But we'll have to wait and see. Hopefully he's got some cold cream for that butt. Anyway, I'll talk to you all later. You all have a good night. And, um, you know, and think of any other questions or whatever. You know, we'll get them. We'll get them solved next Friday. We'll solve the world's problems next Friday. You know, because, you know, it's going to take us at least a week. So, <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you guys later. All right. Bye.